Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 444. Each week yeah, we meet here to um, review the questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today we have Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim uh, is CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, He's also a Google, top in, uh, a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. And Masataki Weiser is a webmaster of uh, wasserweb.net. He's based in Wimbledon. Um, and then Mr. Taki is also a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. Uh, Tim is based in Corby, uh, about 100 miles north of London. All right, um, let me see, I just have to click the right button. Um, click that, that, uh, Okay. Finally, right. All right. Um, the first one is a, is a question from uh, Michael Miguel Martins. Uh, it's titled uh, SEO or Search Engine Optimization Info. Um, you wish you knew about a competitor's website. I see Tim Kapper uh, through the week uh, wrote in uh, who their copywriter is. Yeah, totally. Because your copy and content is, you know, pretty fundamental. Like you can do, you know, on your own site, you can do, um, you know, you can look at the structure, you can do the structure you can look at what's you can look at tons of things but the one thing that every site needs is copy and uh and yeah and sometimes if it's you know if depending on what it is you, you know you need someone that's experienced that in that field and that's what i'd love to know sometimes who writes their copy can i pay them more <laughs> to get them on board yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's go forward to number two on everyone list. Um, oh, that's right. That's this is the one that's just so long. This can be read on um, the uh, Damasio Questions Facebook group. Um, Rhiannon De Havas said, "I have a problem with a question. It's a bit difficult to explain, but I'll try my best. I use Square Squarespace." For my website, I, I have a page that is performing very well for a long tail keyword. It's getting me a small but necessary amount of sales every day because it's currently at number two on Google for that long tail keyword. It took three months after I published it to get it to number two, and it seems to be staying there. Um, can I call you guys in now? Um, I, I, I did just too much in that question too to read out yeah yeah so like the way the way i was looking at this is um yeah look i mean it, it a site map's really handy of course um no my, you know, my fault. i clicked the button it, it, double yeah click. you're on yeah you're kind of on the wrong one now but going back to the original one, um, he's got, I'm just, just, just recap in my mind, long tail query position two doing nicely, okay. shorter tail query is, I don't know, let's call it page three or four. Um, so, so what you got here is, so one thing I need to say is a shorter tail query, although may have higher search volume, it may not actually satisfy or be what the user was actually looking for uh, initially. Also, what you failed, a lot of people forget to look at is if you were 
position one for you know a high volume query the, the average or at least the last time i checked the estimated if you're position one you're only going to be getting 33 percent of that actual volume if they click through to you now your short tail query uh, sorry your long tail query is position two and you already say you're getting traffic and sales not a lot of traffic but the traffic that does come you get some sales which is generally the way it happens because it's more a refined nuance to what the user's searching for and it specifically it deals with that longer thing that the person was looking for which generally um uh, has a has a better conversion but what we have here is you've got a situation where your shorter your shorter tail is not quite ready in google's eyes to be featured as you know you're going to find what you need for this query on this site in in their eyes um but your longer tail is and you know they see the relevance and and that's where you're going to be so my suggestion here is um fill in that fill in that content gap so longer tail we know converts and we know you can already put it onto page one top five so i would fill in those content gaps with more longer tail queries or even slightly shorter but longer tail queries that satisfy the user in between now at the same time you're still interlinking to that shorter tail query so you you're kind of building up i hate the word but you're building up a silo and you are then also saying this is my short this is my main category page for example which is your short tail query so so whilst you're building up that authority but at the same time you're creating you're filling in those content gaps which is in turn gonna rank because we know it can on your site um and is going to still start producing additional sales although the traffic volume is not there sales is what's important so that's the way i would approach it i would fill in that content gap and start working through it with with longer tails which is one going to still drive sales and revenue which is important whilst building up that relevance to the short detail query and that's the way i would play it excellent thank you tim Mr. Tati, um, do you, do you want to add anything to Tim's words? No, I think Tim's on the same bit. Okay, right. Thank you. All right, let's um, go forward to number three on our run list. Uh, Daniel Granavetta uh, asked the question. Uh, it's he's saying, is the sitemap.xml file the most important for search engine optimization? Who wants to say not not at all? Well, as others have said, no. Yeah, that's it. You don't even need it. Um, I personally find sitemaps quite useful because you, if you submit them in the um, search console you know what happened to them and much of the submitted uh, pages are indexed or not indexed and so, so forth so it's useful in that as in that respect and it helps in discovery but it's not really going to do almost anything to uh, rank to ranking as such Thank you, Mesa. All right. Um, I'm also pointing out Brenda Malone, uh, who said, uh, no, uh, an XML sitemap is really not that necessary for small sites, as referenced by John Mueller of Google. That being said, it is super easy to deploy one, so why not? OK, uh, let's roll on to number four on our run list. This one is from Kath J.P. Um, 
It's titled My Website Position Changes Every Day. Um, Kat said, oh, hi everyone. I'm managing a website which position changes every day. For instance, from position 27 in daytime, then 13 at nighttime. I'm still updating pages every day, as many of uh, its content as copied from government websites. I just find this frequent changes weird. Does anyone here have the same experience? Yeah, I mean, you do get quite a bit of changes. Um, uh, yeah, not necessarily that massive jump. Um, but you always get one up, two down, three up, two down. It's kind of regular. Um, I would, if that's always happening, I would probably be looking at, um, I mean, Sal has a pretty good thing there um, uh, in terms of cannibalization. Have you checked which page is ranking now for that query? That's quite a dead giveaway in terms of if, there's, if it's Google's unsure. Um, if you've got two which you're trying to kind of rank for, or at least one is, and they switch switching pages in, in, in the thing, and one will appear at 13, and then they'll drop that one out and switch it for another, which appears at 27. Um, I would definitely check that. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there could be so many really. Uh, um, I wonder if you come back with a couple of, show us a page, you know, say, look, yesterday this was a 13, today it's a 27, and, you know, the next day it was a 10, if it's a singular URL. Um, maybe we can have a quick look and see if there's anything that's glaringly obvious, and obviously what the search query is. I mean, that's another thing. Um, how's it doing at slightly longer tail like what i mean is is it in a stable position for like if it's yeah i mean shorter tail sometimes fluctuates a lot when it's google's trying to figure out what's going on whereas a longer tail for that actual query it may be position one all day long or position four all day long um yeah, probably a little bit more info would uh, help us out in giving you some better ideas. Thank you, Tim. So the, the advice is to wait, wait, wait uh, till we get some more information. Okay, yeah, let's move on to number five on our run list. Uh, this one from Mariam Sharif, uh, is it necessary to add dub, dub, dub uh, to an existing domain that has been indexed by Google without the dub, dub, dub? Ash Nalawala. Um, no, no, because, I mean, the one thing I would check is obviously if you're current domain is that's insta index is without the dub dub um make sure the dub 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 redirects to the non dub 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 like you don't want somebody inadvertently putting in dub 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 and it's like no site so that's the only thing i know no dub dub is fine just make sure your redirects in place thank you tim excellent all right let's go to number six on our run list we're halfway there um it's titled how ranking for keywords is handled between geographic regions this was answered by christine hansen uh, through the week on on, on the msk questions facebook group um george mulford um went on to say hello everyone I, i'm confused about how ranking for keywords is 
handled between geographic regions. I have some e-commerce stores and say I rank highly for keyword X in the UK. Does that mean I will also rank highly for that keyword in the USA? Mm, not necessarily. Um, no, because that's a completely different country. Um, so if you're in the UK, you will have obviously a lot of um, uh, local um, domains, as in .co.uk, which may be also in that query space. And so, so for example, you may be a .com. And then, of course, in the in in the US, you may not have the .co.uk is appearing for that query, like ecom. I'm guessing it's a product. Um, either uh, the other thing is is do you provide the price in a dollar? Like that could be, you know, um, play into it. Do you ship to it? Like there's there's a lot of things where it's not just like if you rank in one country for that, how are you going to rank in another country for that? Because you forget the, you know, competing local for that same product and you may not even ship there. So Google is definitely going to see that and like, mm, and they will try not to show a site that's displaying British pounds in a country that is in a query that's dollars, unless you, they can find that you do actually provide in dollars. Do you, do you see what I mean? So there, there's there's a lot of things, and no, it's not it, no. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I think important things are sort of prices. What in which currency is it denominated? Um, the delivery costs as well. You know, do you deliver in the first place? If you do, how much does it cost? Um, you know. International shipping will cost a lot more than domestic. Um, those things are, I mean, extremely important. So, in a sense, um, and uh, um, George Walford asks later, if you scroll down a bit, Jim, um, whether it is worth creating a .com and .co.uk site for the US and UK market, respectively. Um, it, that may make sense, but I don't think we have to do that. You could see use the .com, but have a page that is targeted to the UK where prices are in British pounds, and all the information is clearly um, localized to the UK market. So that would include um, orthographic as Christian Hansen mentioned. Um, but I think the really important things are things like prices, um, adherence to regulations, um, delivery charges, those kind of information. And those have to be specific to that local. Thank you, Mr. Tati. Let's go to number seven on our own list. Nathan Bradshaw asked this one. He said, I'm creating content focusing on skyscraper format. Uh, Nathan said, hello all. I'm creating content focusing on skyscraper format. It has around 6,000 plus words, 15 headings. For example, definition, um, features, who should use, comparison, cost, etc. The quality of content is top notch. Can you please give me some suggestions on how um, I should design it so that readers don't get bored or the bounce rate um, remains minimum? I mean, six, 6,000 plus words, that's a long essay. 
I mean, who's going to read that? I, mean, I, mean, I find it a little too much to put it on a single page. That's my personal view. Because you're asking someone to commit to go through 6,000 plus words um, and read through everything from definition to features to who should use, etc. when a lot of people are most likely to be at the various different stages of research. So obviously there will be people who want to know what the definition of a particular thing is. But those people are different from the group of people who have decided to purchase something, let's say, and want to compare different products within the same market. Obviously, the argument is that you know, if you have one big long content, then you're going to meet all those uh, different groups and needs, and then people will jump straight to the section that they're interested in. But I'm not so sure if that really works. I mean, um, is it just me or am I just being too skeptical about this um, skyscraper format thing? Look, essentially everything is some kind of, I mean, I don't know, is skyscraper the same as silo? There's all these bloody terms now. Essentially, you know, your content should all obviously link to the relevant page in the site, which eventually is a silo or skyscraper. Um, look, 6,000, if you publish 6,000, you're going to have a bounce rate. Bounce rate doesn't matter for anything really anyway. Um, because every page will have its own sort of defined bounce rate. Um, but that is mega. That's m massive. Um, if, if, like, if people can't jump to the section they need and you don't provide a proper index, like Masataki said, you, they're just going to abandon that like straight off the bat after the first paragraph and when they realize how freaking big that is. Um, so you're going to have to definitely provide jump to sections. If you don't do that, it may, well, falling within your skyscraper sec thing, you can create multiples out of that. Take each section. I don't know. There may be six sections and they are a thousand each. That could be six pieces of content within all nested nicely, all interlinking through to the main page. Um, yeah, that was, um, good. Um, I see Michael Martin has um, also. Uh, um answer this um through the week on the demosia questions facebook group i think I, i'd like to read it out uh, michael said uh, word count is not very important nor is the way that you structure an article what makes the content interesting is what you say how you say it and how you present it even a so-called wall of words can be interesting and engaging if it says something that people relate to. What are you hoping to publish that will be more interesting than what is already out there? Do you have a better way of explaining things for readers? Do you have something new to say? And can you provide uh, more reliable sources? Yeah, and right. if you scroll down a bit, uh, Nathan's answer to that, I think is quite interesting and illuminating. Right. And that sounds as if Nathan's trying to aggregate things and put everything in one place. Okay. 
And I'm not so sure that answers the needs that people have. Who are at, as I mentioned earlier, various stages of research or purchase. Okay, should I move on to the next matter? Um, yeah. Okay. I'd, li I'd like to know what he means by skyscraper format. Um, have you come across that? No, but I assume that it's, it's one of those um, format of articles um, that has that is very long and tall that's like a skyscraper builder so you know it will you'd have to scroll and scroll and scroll to go through the whole thing um, and but it will contain absolutely everything related to a particular topic thank you but, yeah but I think that um, you know, it is possible to have a long format. That, that's not that's not an issue. You can have six thousand plus um, words on certain topics. That's entirely appropriate in occasions. But I think I'm not entirely sure that it works in the example that Nathan provided, because that to me seems to be discrete and disparate bits and pieces. And okay, you know. Let's put everything on one page. I'm not sure is the best thing to do. I mean, the fundamental question, the most fundamental question, I think we have to ask and answer is what purpose does it serve for the person and looking for a particular thing? Because I don't think in most cases people are looking um, you know, from A to Z, if that makes sense. They're in a process, some they're looking for somewhere between A and Z. They're not you know, trying to look up and understand something. They're not looking for a Wikipedia entry. So that's where I said I'm being slightly skeptical about how that might work. Thank you, Mr. Bagley. All right, let's go to number uh, eight on our run list. Chris Green, uh, he writes, migrating to a new site um, with new URL structures. Chris said, hey guys, if migrating to a new site, WordPress to WordPress with new URL structures, is it best practice to add a self-canonical tag the preferred version of every URL, or is this not really essential? While well, you guys are thinking about that one, um, I'll read out Stro Stockbridge Trustlow's uh, comment uh, from the um, yeah. Questions Facebook Actually, group. Yeah. Go ahead, Mesa. Stockbridge Trustlow's second response, I think, is a really good summary of what, what you should do. So if you scroll down, um, then Stop Bridge Trussler has um, laid out an eight-step um, formula for moving a site. So it's not that comment, it's uh, further below. Did I miss something there, Mr. Taki? I, I, I thought I was following you, but I, I must have missed something there. Uh, no, could you scroll down further? It says Stockbridge Truslow um, commented uh, a few times in that thread, and um, I'm currently seeing the first one, but um, Stockbridge Truslow has laid out an eight point or eight step 
formula for moving a site. So if you could scroll down further, or can you not? Jim? Yeah, I'm still scrolling. It's not moving in, in the screen. Share. Can you see it, Tim? That's really weird. I, I, I am, uh, I swear it is moving uh, um, down on my side. Um, but it's not on the screen <laughs> that I see. Jingos. Um, um but going back to the original question in a sense i think there are a few things that are being conflated and sort of put together um okay so there's migration uh, of posts and then of themes wordpress themes and the url structure is going to change And if that's the case, um, in the end, the old URLs should be directed to new ones if they are equivalent. That's the sort of the short answer. But um, in the community, um, Stop with Truslo gives a really good extensive answer to that question. Okay, uh, let's um, move on to uh, number nine on our run list. This one from Michael Phillip. Um, he said, what would be best for search engine optimization purposes? He has to say, hello, I'm new to, to SEO and I have a question I hope you can help with. I launched a website for my real estate business a couple of years ago, Colorado. Colorado Homes by Mike. And I've done a lot of marketing and, and been working on improving my search engine optimization. My wife uh, is now joining me and we'll be working together as a team. Uh, she's a native Spanish speaker and we'd like to target the Spanish speaking population. And since my URL is specific uh, to only me, we are considering a new URL with a new team name. Um, that is uh, Philip Dash Perez uh, team. What would be the best for search engine optimization purposes? Uh, uh, creating the new website uh, with a new team URL and just start over with um, SEO and marketing. Um, having her own website with her own unique URL or any other ideas suggestions. I don't know if I'm fully aware of all the options. Thanks. I, I would I would be um, doing it um, in um, Spanish and um, using AA scripts. Yeah, and yeah, and creating a new brand, I reckon. Yeah, because it, 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 it has to be different, doesn't it? Okay. Michael, um, could I ask, could, could you ask this question again? Um, and that will um, cause uh, this question to be reloaded for next week. All right, let, let's go to uh, number 10 on our run list. What do you do when a website uh, suddenly sends thousands of backlinks? Mohammed Umar said, hello, SEOs. Um, what do you do when a website sends thousands of backlinks suddenly? It's already disavowed, but 
and no result. Um, e. Dieter Martin, um, he said uh, uh, it could just be a, a web WordPress site with a, a blog roll on every page. Um, check in and establish what's going on there um, before jumping um, to any conclusions. But the other thing is too, um, you, you might disavow um, uh, the, the um, hierarchical uh, um, a tree. Um, you might disavow it, but Google uh, has to see it. Um, and, and it might be that it's 10 days before Google is, is due back to your site. Um, and, then, and then the index uh, gets revised. Um, based on changes. So you know, it, it's not a real time response. And, that, and that's, that, that confuses a lot of people. All right. Um, what else do we have for this one, guys? Well, I suppose the question would you worry at all? If you haven't done anything nefarious. I mean, it feels a bit icky, as it were, but... Yeah, and, and also don't forget, like, if it's the, like you said, he said just one site, didn't he? So one domain? Yeah. So if it's crap to start with, you, you don't need to keep updating, just disavow the domain. Don't do the individual pages, just right. the domain. That's one job done, end off, move on. Yeah, good point, Tim. Right, let's rock on to number 11 on our run list. Um, it's, yeah, Jack, Jack and Malthus. Um, it's titled, Should I Redirect the Old Website um, to the New Website? Um, Jack and goes on to say, I have my old website, abcdgroup.in, and now the new website has been created, abcdglobal.com. One, so should I redirect the old um, website uh, to, to um, the new website? Is there any harm as per Google? Because Google say that redirection is spam to get ranking. Um, I, I don't know who's, who's said that. Um, um, it, 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 it's, it's simply uh, inaccurate uh, if somebody at Google did say that, but I, I can't see that they, they would have. Um, yeah. Look, she's, yes, you should be re redirecting page by page from the old, the old domain to the new domain, page by page. Um, if you haven't changed it that much, hopefully with a bit of luck, you're going to be able to do an easy, you know, sort of catch all redirect uh, because hopefully your internal structure is the same. Uh, but if you did actually change things, uh, you know, different, you know, the actual URLs on different pages when you were doing it, then page by page. But yeah, redirect everything, page by page. Yeah, that, <laughs> except in this case, the kicker is that the content has changed. And new pages have been added with new products and so on and so forth. So it sounds as if it's a totally different site in terms of content. It's not simply changing the domain name from dot into dot com. But Apparently, they have changed the content. So it's more complicated <laughs> in this instance. If there are equivalent pages, we direct. But if not, then it does become slightly trickier. Mm. 
Okay. Um, yeah. Some of this is, is difficult because um, um, it, it, it's it's hard to be certain of, of the scenario. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is it is a bit difficult because you know the, in the comments, Jack and Matheson spoke in answer to a question by Stockbridge Tuslow. Quote, I have changed the total content, added many new pages, new products, etc. So is redirect final not? And you know, we were, and the answer becomes complicated. You know, if it's if the content had been the same, then it's one to one, like Tim said. Simple job. But if content has changed totally, then it's a totally different site. And, and then I'm not and then I'm not sure what the best course of action is. I mean if you no longer keep the old content, then this is what I would do, but I'm not so sure whether this would be the thing that others would do. If you don't have an equivalent page on the new site, and you're removing the content from the that content from the old site, I would return a 404. And on a 404 page, I'd explain that this domain is no longer in use. Our new site is at new domain. Thank you, Mesa. All right, it, it just to um, reinforce that um, Google um, would never have said um, that redirection is uh, something that's just done to get ranking. I think they might have read something about purchasing old domain, expired domain for the ring, for the ring. For the right amount of links, I think that that's probably what's behind this. Yeah, true, true. All right, so here we go to number twelve, and our, our final question for the night from El Bakito, uh, who joined us not so long ago. Uh, El Bakito said, "I am ranking for a competitor's keyword." Um, he said, it, it, it's in brackets, that is uh, testosterone booster, 500 milligrams, test stacker RX in brackets. My question is, if I keep on optimizing it through the content and then just suggest using our product or theirs around the keyword and have a comparison done, um, would that uh, be beneficial to funnel them uh, into our product page? I would say no. Um, and I, I imagine Tim Kappel would have more or Masataki would have more, but I, I, I certainly uh, would say no. But having said that, I noticed that Michael Martinez uh, has just said it can be beneficial, but there are no guarantees. Um, it's one of those um, your money is your life um, scenarios, isn't it? It is, I think so, because it's, it must be medical in nature. Um, and I'm not sure whether it's a controlled substance or not. But, uh... So I suppose when they say that they're ranking for competitors' keyword, they're ranking for competitors' brand. Would that be right? You know, you have yeah, but what's ranking? Like, yeah. why is he having to then 
Like, I don't understand if if it's already ranking, then they're landing on your product. What's the? Uh, 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 am I lost here? What what, what is ranking? Yeah. Like, why does he then need to try and redirect them to their product? I, I don't, I don't get it. No, I think it's it's a bit like having a, you know, um, sort of same ingredients but trading in different names. All right. So you know, you know, you have that you know, oh, my hazy but have that you know, clarity mm. is a bad name, but it has you know certain ingredients. Which are generically can buy off supermarkets. Yeah. Um, so my so in my mind, how I understood the question is that so there are two different brands. Um, both contain the same amount of active ingredients, and they're ranking for the competitors' brand name. So people look for you know, their brand name, then boom, their page appears. They're trading in different, you know, have a different brand name, same ingredients, but different brand name, and they're ranking for the competitor's brand name. That's how I answer the question. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Yeah, but I agree with you, Jim. I don't think I would do it because, I mean, it could get a bit complicated, you know, if you're party to it and then you're sort of setting a comparison site and you compare your own to others yeah, and the, i mean the other thing is i mean if 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 there's say going to do a comparison on on, on two or three drugs um then they're setting themselves up as an authority um who can interpret the value of drugs um and as as you know that's a a fairly specialised um, skill, and um, Google's reluctant to uh, put in um, people professing to have those skills without proof. Well, that and um, would you normally sort of compare your product to other names? Brands. I mean, you might say competitor A, competitor B, and if you know what you're talking about, you probably can figure out what competitor A and competitor B is. But they didn't tend to name them specifically. Yeah. Um, so I'm not so sure if if the intent is to use the competitor's brand name. I do not. I just find that risky. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, if you haven't, like, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, you could go down a whole lot of legal stuff there if you're using the brand name, um, unless you have scientific data that scientists will back up. Yeah, I, I, I know, I, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, I, but that's a good way, isn't it? You can quote if there's a published study in a scientific journal then you know you can copy that part to highlight um, your product versus others but otherwise ugh, i just find it a little too risky to my liking i wouldn't do that if i were in that position okay well, um, if there's no other uh, items of general business, I'll uh, declare this meeting closed and uh, we'll put it aside until uh, this time next week when we'll do this uh, all again. Um, each week we uh, review the questions and answers uh, given and asked uh, on the, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, yeah, I, I, before before we go, I must thank uh, people like Michael Martinez, Stockbridge uh, Trustler, Emma Johns, um, 
and uh, others uh, who uh, answer questions through the work and make uh, Damasio questions such a uh, valuable resource. And also, I, I must thank uh, you guys, uh, Masataki and, and Tim. Um, your, your support is um, impeccable. Anyway, let's um, click this button and we should be gone.